Hey guys, in today's video we're going to come back to the React application and we're going to be building out a new component. Um, this component is going to help us with authentication, specifically with creating routes that we only want to allow people that are logged in to access. So I'm going to call this an auth route and we're going to build out this component and how it's going to work is uh, it's going to be a new component and I'm just going to make it look like the same thing as a route so it'll just be like auth route It'll take all the same parameters as a regular React router route, but if you try to access it without being logged in, it'll redirect you to log in. Um, so you have to be authorized to be able to access this route. So that's what we're going to be building. And the reason why we're building this today is we just built out the back end to be able to create a listing. So we really need to be able to, uh, before anyone can be able to access the form to even create a listing, we have to be able to check whether they're uh, allowed to, right? So let's go ahead and get started with this. And we're gonna be starting in the controller uh, package. Reason for that is we're gonna be sharing this auth component between the React Native app and also uh, the React app. So I'm gonna put this inside of the modules folder and I'm gonna create a new folder called auth. And inside of that, I'm gonna call it auth route. Now, the logic for this is actually pretty simple. All it's really going to do is call the me query. So how the me query works is it returns null if the user is not logged in. So this is me not logged in. You can see I don't have a cookie and it returns null. But if I'm logged in and I have a cookie, I can now log in and I see an email. So what this route's going to do is it's going to call the me query, check if the user has an email. If we do get an email back, we go ahead and let them go to the route they're supposed to go to. Otherwise, we redirect them to login. So that's the basic flow of how this is going to work. So this is going to be a pure function. I'm going to say auth route. And we're going to say interface props. And now the props that we want to take, as I mentioned before, are going to be the exact same props that the route takes. So if we want to, we can actually come and click on this route and see uh, what props this guy takes, right? And basically steal them. So it takes route props. So we're just gonna basically um, copy those. All right, so we're gonna come back to this guy and I don't even think we need to actually create a props type ourselves. We can just say route props. Now, I don't know if we actually have React Router or React DOM installed over here, um, or sorry, React Router. So on our website we have, if we look at our package.json, we have React Router DOM installed. Um, and then we have React Router native installed on our app. So I'm not sure if we have either of those installed on the controller right now. I don't think we do. Um, and we wanna be able to get this to work with React um, native and with React. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the generic one. So we're going to say yarn add React router. And you can see we've already even imported it from React router already. We just don't have it. Um, and then we're also going to have to download the types after that as well. So I'm not going to install or not install but import from React Apollo the GraphQL higher order component. And I'm going to say const me query and I need to import GQL as well and this is coming from um, not react but GraphQL tag so we can just copy the query over here and again I'm going to do what I usually do so I'm going to call this C and I'm going to export const auth route is equal to GraphQL and we're going to pass in the me query. So now we want to be able to pass in the TypeScript types for this query. So we're going to have to generate those. So it looks like it finished installing React Router. Uh, I think we also need to install the types for it. Um, it it's not complaining right now. I'm going to wait and to see if it complains and then we'll add them later if we need to. But right now I'm going to say um, I forget what we called it. Refresh, no, we're gonna do gen types. And then we'll be able to get the TypeScript types for the me query. 
and uh, we also are going to use um, looks like I might have messed up oh so this is an anonymous so we need to give it a name so query and I think it's lowercase I'm just going to type it over here real quick to confirm yep it is and then I just have to give it a name right here so I'm going to call this me query and I think the convention I've been following with this is uh, giving this a lowercase m so I'm going to give that a lowercase m there and uh, let's rerun this so yeah you need to always make sure you give your queries and mutations a name that's something I forget to do alright cool so if we look at our schema types it'll now TypeScript will refresh and know they exist so now I can say me query and by the way here you can pass in your props if you want to so right now we have route props as our props and in this case I like to just uh, rename it like so and pass in the props there pass in the props there um, and the reason for that is we may uh, down the line change where our props are so we now are using props here and here uh, instead of just saying route props there and there um, and then this can be a child so this is coming from react Apollo child props that way we can get the props um, from GraphQL this query and we're gonna pass in our regular props and the me query alright so that's all the setup we need to do we can now start writing our component so it's going to use the route component from react router and we're gonna say const this dot props so the props that I want to pass to the route component right here are all of them except for two um, the first one is data so data is coming from uh, our higher order component right here and route doesn't really care about that so what I'm going to do is uh, this and I'm gonna say dot 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 rest and then we're gonna put the rest on it like that and there's one more we have to get rid of but I first want to explain how this works so we're destructuring this object and we're pulling out data and here I'm just renaming data so if I left it like this TypeScript would be like hey you have an unused variable here called data that you're not using so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it like that and now TypeScript won't complain about it um, looks like TypeScript's not complaining either way I think I just have to restart my TypeScript server and it should start barking um, and then the second one is component so component and again just gonna rename it so TypeScript doesn't care about it and I gave it two underscores because I named this one with one underscore and the reason why uh, we're not using component is because we're gonna do stuff with component we're gonna have our own custom render method here um, so how react router works is you can either pass in a component like this or you can use the render which you can just do a function in there uh, which is what we're going to use uh, but when we use this auth route we're going to pass a component in so for example here's our component we want to render um, that we do not want to just directly pass in because we want to use the render function so here we're going to say render route and here we're going to pass in um, this dot render route and it doesn't like it and the reason for that I think is we just haven't filled this out if we actually do like for example return null it, it likes it now so now in this render route is where we're gonna put all our logic uh, and now we have access to two things that we care about the data component and that's what we're gonna use up here so now we care about the data and this component here and I'm going to rename this to component that way we can actually render it there we go and uh, here we get all the route props so route props route component props so uh, this is just something react router gives you uh, when it it calls it through the render function so this is going to have like history and location all that jazz oops 
So we want to make sure and keep those because we're going to need them. So now we want to check. So if there's not data or we're loading. Here you can show a loading screen. So this means we're loading the me query and we don't want to render the screen quite yet. So you can just put anything you want here. I'm just going to put null and what that will do is render just a white screen and then stuff will pop up. Next thing we want to check is if we got something from the me, right? So if we make it to this point, that means the data has loaded. So we're going to say, um, and we can grab that, we can destructure data if we wanted to. So we can say me, um, and you can see there's a question mark on me, so it may not be there. Uh, so maybe it's better to just say data.me. So if there's not data.me, or not data.me.email, right? So if we don't get an email or we don't get uh, me, then we know something's bad. Basically, um, user not logged in. We don't really actually care if they don't have an email, right? Maybe their email is not there. Maybe that's something you want to check. Uh, so that's something you can add if you want. Either way, the main thing we want to check though is whether this is null or not. Uh, but in this case, we're going to render a redirect. And we're going to say to slash login. Uh, so if they've made it past here, so it finished loading, and the user does exist, me does exist, then we can go ahead and render the route regular. So I'm going to say component, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spread route props. So this is me just passing the props um, in here. Um, I'm not really sure why TypeScript complains about this one. Uh, usually what I do in this case is to just use uh, any. So I'm going to say, instead of renaming it there, I'm going to say const component is equal to component as any. And now we can render it OK. And this is our auth component that we're going to use. So let's go ahead and try this out. I'm going to do yarn built. And uh, I'll explain, we'll walk through one more time how this code works after we test it out. So I'm going to create a new route now, assuming that builds. And so this is going to be create listing. And let's go ahead and create a module in our website called create listing. And you know what? I'm going to say, I'm going to call it listing, and then inside of listing, I'm going to create a folder called create. And inside of there, I'm going to say, I don't know, just create listing connector.tsx. And then for now, I'm just going to say, like, hello or something. Connector. So this is going to be your protected route, so I guess this is secret infos here. So then back over here, we now want to import this. Let's make sure this finished building okay. It did. So I'm going to import that now from the controller. Oops. And ooh, I forgot to export it. I do that every time. So we need to go back to controller index.ts and we're going to say modules slash auth slash auth route. And now we have to rebuild because we just made a change to our controller. Um, but we can then grab it like so. Um, all right, so we'll see if our front end is able to, uh, this is our back end, Let's see if our front end is able to. So I'm going to have to restart the front end here. And while this is restarting, I think I'm going to go ahead over here and uh, do yarn add as a dev dependency types react router. Because I think we do need those. I don't think it just comes default um, with react router. I could be wrong. I'm not sure why it's not complaining, but I'm going to be safe and install it there just in case. Um, 
we'll let this restart and then we'll test our server or test our website I mean okay so it finished starting up and I am logged in over here but I want to test out the not logged in first so I'm gonna go ahead and clear my cookies so when I go over to create listing and you can take a look at the URL here so it loads you can see I'm loading I'm not logged in so it takes me back to the login page over here and you can see this nicely if you also just go to the home page and then try to go to create listing and it'll just take you right back so now if I log in with csc.com and now I try to go to create listing it should show us the secret information and it didn't so let's see where I, I messed it up let's go back to author out so alright so we render the route so if it's not data or not loading uh, okay so this is where I messed up so I'm supposed to show null when it's loading but I said not loading I meant to do loading right here so if we're loading we want to show null so save this um, and I'm gonna come back and rebuild over here um, yeah so we first check whether it's loading we return null then once we get the actual data we can actually make a decision based on whether we need to redirect the user otherwise we just return the component that the user has right so in this case that component is the text page all right let's change that so here's the other thing I meant to render the create listing connector there we go save that um, oh I need to import that correctly so I'm going to say modules uh, up to directories modules listing create create listing connector all right so now let's try going over to create listing and we can see the secret info so there you go so that is how you would do it with cookies as opposed to local storage is before you render um, pages that need the user to be authenticated you will just make a request